Hey, uh, Tom. Hey, hey. what's going um, on? I know the Packers season, you know, not great, but it's turning around right now, looking good right now. Yeah. Have you ever been in a a situation where you legitimately wondered if Condoleezza Rice could come in and save your team as the head coach? No. Because I'm thinking it's Condi time, baby. Uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about it because while Brandon Pernan did put out a lot of stuff, go check all that stuff out. Uh, I kind of want to just like go like after the aftermath and look through the rubble of going like, okay, what yeah. do we do now? Because it wasn't just Nathaniel Hackett is fired. It's who they offered the job to, which I think was the right pick who then said, nay, nay, no thanks. So let's work on the defense. Then it was who they brought up time manager. And then on top of that, it's looking of, Hey, we're going to express like put our support behind our GM, but also the new head coach is going to basically be right under the owner. So yeah. that's what's real interesting. Enjoy that game, Andy. So um, yeah, yeah, it things was, are things are uh, rough in Bronco Land. They're not good. I'll say they are. Uh, you ever ever hear the phrase "worst case scenario"? <laughs> yes, we are living it. We made a big splashy trade. Yep, got the coach we wanted. Yep, and we are literally worst case scenario um all right so nathaniel hackett gets fired two weeks before the end of the season that's not a huge surprise that's, uh... hackett will probably never get another head coaching job but uh maybe he's just more suited to be like a uh offensive coordinator and i fully expect him back with the packers Maybe as a consultant, probably <laughs> potentially consultant, they could bring him in right away. It's like when Josh McDaniels got fired from the uh, Rams and the Patriots said, oh, no, no, you just come back here and help us in this playoff run. Yep. I could feel I could see the same thing. Um, it could. Is Euro Evero saying no? A little uh -huh. bit of a surprise, but mostly <laughs> seems like a smart move for him because he's going to get all of the uh, head coaching, head coaching yep. uh, opportunities. So they named Jerry Rosberg as the interim head coach, who is the guy they brought in to make sure Hackett didn't, you know, Nathaniel Hackett the hired timeouts every week. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And then they fired special teams coordinator Dwayne Stukes and offensive line coach Butch Berry. So both of us wanted a Berry gone this mm -hmm. season. So we have that in common, Tom. <laughs> Uh, and I think the Butch Berry firing, the one really big mistake Nathaniel Hackett made when he took the job in Denver mm -hmm. was getting rid of offensive line coach Mike Munchak and replacing him with Butch Berry. Um, that was it was clearly an issue outside of the injuries, but I didn't I didn't see those other firings happening like right now, like. I guess you look at it in a way where things can't get worse. So, yeah, let's get rid of the special teams guy that's not working. Let's get rid of the offensive line coach that's not working. And let's just have less coaches to get through the rest of the season. Well, I mean, it. so listen, like years ago, the Packers dealt with this, though, because Mike McCarthy, like it wasn't a good season. It was going rough. We got beaten by the Cardinals at home and they fired Mike McCarthy with just a couple of games left in the season. And I didn't, I didn't like that. You know, like Mike McCarthy, his time definitely had come in Green Bay, like Dom Capers is the DC before him, what have you. But Mike McCarthy did so much for the organization. At some point, I was like, hey, like we need to, like at least like, you know, have like kind of that respect. But unfortunately, like, that's the business, you know? So yep. at the end of the day, they fired him. So like here, it just looks like, Okay, well, if we are going to get rid of Nathaniel Hackett, this guy who is going to make so much guaranteed money, right? Like, this hurts. Like, this does not feel good. Well, we might as well rip off the Band-Aid and fire these lesser coaches, too. Why are we going to wait if we're already, like, you know, trying to chop the head off the top of the snake? Yeah. <clears throat> Walmart came in and basically said, yeah, we don't care how much money we need to eat. Uh, yeah. This is not working. And the <laughs> here's what does concern me. Um, when Walt, the Walton Pinner group took over for the Broncos, uh, they have Rob Walton is the de facto owner, right? 
but really the team's going to be run by Greg Pinner, his uh, son-in-law, essentially, I believe. I think it's his son-in-law. So Greg Pinner, he's the guy doing the, the real operations there. Mm -hmm. And our question as Broncos fans was like, how hands-on is he going to be? A guy who isn't in the NFL circles, doesn't have the NFL experience. How hands-off is he going to be? And is he going to just let GM George Payton run things? And initially, they did. And they mm -hmm. said that's what was going to happen. And already, we got this shift. Uh, new head coach reporting directly to yep. Pinner. So that's a, that's a big change. Um, it, in a way, kind of neuters uh, George Payton a little bit. At least one testicle. We'll call it a one testicle <laughs> neutering of, of George Payton. Because... And it won't surprise me, honestly, if they just fire George Payton after the season, if there's some other GM that they decide they want. Yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. Maybe it's for the better. Maybe that's what they need. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but here's the other thing that's a real reality, is they could move on from Russell Wilson this offseason. They could. So they they can come after fire. June 1st. It, I mean, it's it's bad. It means the next season's going to be bad but it would be okay because then maybe they're in a position to draft a guy in a correct good, good draft class we correct. might just have to eat uh 2023 as well but to believe that the team would think and possibly actually move on from russell wilson this offseason asinine but i think it could happen i'm not saying it will well, it, but yeah. it could. Well, because you had the reports coming out say that they think like Russ is fixable, right? But it like we talked, that was the last thing we talked about on GPS on Monday. Like it was a freaking omen. I was like, well, what, like, what do you have to look forward to this offseason knowing Russell Wilson's still going to be your quarterback? And like it got really depressing and sad. Yeah, and, but it was like kind of like, well, I don't know. If you're a brand new head coach, <clears throat> one, now I'm concerned because you're basically just going to be listening to the owner it's basically like a jerry jones situation but in terms of you know you like trying to get in like massive talent like let's just throw names out there and i don't think it's gonna happen but like sean payton right sean payton ain't coming to freaking denver to be like yeah let's coach up russell wilson i know that there's like ties back there in the future but like unless he thinks like if you had to pick between justin herbert and russell wilson of like hey who do i want is my my spry young qb I mean, I would pick Russell Wilson. Of course he would. So I think at this point, though, like, I don't know who they're going to be able to attract that's going to bring in the level of talent that's needed. But at the same time, the Broncos are more than just a new head coach away from being successful. So, yeah, just because they fired Hackett doesn't mean like, no, that's. Basically, what I, I've said over the last couple of days is like, I'm in no way sold that just by firing Hackett, you're going to fix this team. In terms of a big coach, like in the video, I said, they're not do they're not getting Sean Payton. Not going to happen. After listening to Walter or uh, sorry, uh, Greg Pinner talk. I don't I think I think they'll go after whoever they want, and they'll make them an offer that they can refuse. Hey, it's me, South Carolina, Jersey Mike, coming in here, make them an offer they can refuse. Uh, so I think I think Peyton's a, a possibility. I think Harbaugh's a possibility. I think they're going to say, here's a check. Tell me how many zeros you want on there to be the coach of this team, and we're going to make it happen because they said they're going to give the head coach any resource they need to succeed. And I think if you are a guy who's had Sean Payton success, you've had Harbaugh's success, that <laughs> you'll look at that opportunity as bad as it is with Russ as a team that's willing to get away from him so you can build the team the way you want it, or you have to be confident enough in your game plan to build a winning formula with your offense around Russ. So that being said, I think it's – okay. Because you're, you're kind of implying that it, it, you could get an experienced good coach yeah. because they're going to throw a lot of money at them, right? Money, resources, power. Like they're going to, I think it's, if they're reporting directly to the owner, uh, they have 
arguably more power than the GM. Um, so I think I think that's something to be thought of. And again, on Monday, I didn't think Harbaugh was a real possibility, and I didn't think Sean Payton had any possibility. Now I think there's a small possibility of Sean Payton, and I think a bigger chance for Harbaugh. And I don't think Harbaugh would want to leave where he's at. Like, I don't think it makes sense for him to do it. Okay? I'm not even trying to curse Michigan. He just hates I'm the just state saying... of Michigan, folks. He just does not like the state of Michigan. That's what it's coming down to. He's cursing now their college teams. What if we take Jim Harbaugh, Michigan, okay, state of Michigan, and it's going to lead to the Broncos' massive success, but they lose the Super Bowl to the Lions? Will you take that deal, Michigan, now? answers i don't know i feel like it kind of puts it limits your search because if you are a young head coach right and like this would be your first head coaching gig i don't know if you want to go to the denver broncos because it has a good chance of blowing up in your face and gonna impact you getting a job in the future i i would be concerned about that right in that it's yeah. you know it's not a stepping stone like it's it needs to be a destination so it needs to be like someone who has the resume that's like if this blows up you know, I'm just going to make a lot of money and it'll work out. Right. So like, you know, I, I won't get hired again, likely, or it'll be a while, but I'm going to give you the, the opportunity cost, right. is too great. So I just think that, you know, if you're a young sprite, you know, up and coming coach, I don't think you do. Cause the reason being is like Israel didn't take it. And like, he's going to get it. Cause I think those last three games or two games, wherever we're at, they might go poorly. And like, they doesn't want to, I don't know, like mark up his resume a little bit and just be like, yeah. hey, because you could get the money based off of the unknown, right? Nathaniel Hackett, yeah. he was a head coach previously. It didn't work out super hot, right? It did for like a season. Then it blew up. He goes to Green Bay. He has all this success. And they're like, oh, we don't know how he's going to be as a head coach, but let's throw a lot of money at him because we think he's going to be successful. Boom, right? It's every Bill Belichick head coach. It's all like the Sean McVay. It's all the Shanahan trees. So like, Evro's looking at this going like, well, I'm not going to like let the cat out of the bag just yet. I'm not going to show my cards just yet because I'd rather go in with more money and like them having the unknown, like, is he going to be great or not?